We will now call the meeting to order. Welcome to the Santa Rosa County Board of County Commissioners Commission Committee meeting. Today is Monday, February the 23rd, 2015. It is 9 a.m. I would ask anyone who has a cell phone, please put it in a silent mode. Anyone wishing to speak today, make sure you fill out a speaker's form at the front desk. For the record, Commissioner Cole is not with us today. He's uh, out of town representing the county at the National Association of Counties up in Washington, D.C., playing in the snow. Uh, we're going to start the meeting with prayer by our Public Services Director, Tony Gomillion, and the pledge by Commissioner Rob Williamson. Please stand. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to meet and gather together to do the business of this county. Lord, we thank you for our jobs and, and Lord, for placing us in these positions. Lord, we just pray that you'd help us to make good and right decisions. And we'll do all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. At this time, we will approve the agenda for today, and I'll start with Commissioner Jager Williamson. I have no additions today, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I have one that's going to be under the budget uh, portion of the agenda, and it's going to be for a $5,400 budget uh, amendment. It'll be for the septic needs at the Five Dallas Community Center so we can uh, set up our new concession trailer. That'll be okay. under your... Just want me to go to you at that point? Your number eight, uh, number nine? Yes, if you would. Number nine on the Budget and Financial Management Committee. Okay. Okay, Commissioner Rob Williamson. No changes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Lynch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a couple of add-ons. First, under Economic Development uh, Committee, this really will be an add-on for Thursday. Just wanted to put it out there, and Shannon can elaborate when he gets up to the mic a little bit later. Uh, an add-on related to uh, developing a community agreement for the Tough Mudder event to be held in March, and this is a requirement for obtaining insurance. We could put that as number five on Economic Development. And then also, um, I have an add-on related to participating with the City of Gulf Breeze, City of Pensacola, and Escambia County in funding uh, a, a study related to uh, an MOT plan for the construction of the Three Mile Bridge. Uh, each entity has been asked to contribute up to $5,000 towards that study. Um, we add that on, maybe number nine under admin. And those are the only two I have. Okay, for the record, the Tough Mudder Agreement will be number five under economic development, and the Three Mile Bridge study will be number nine under admin. Okay, thank you. Mr. Walker? Mr. Andrews? Nothing. Mr. Blaylock? Ms. Bell? Okay. This time we will approve the agenda as, amend as amended. Without objection, here and none, it passes. We will now get into the agenda and start with Economic Development Committee. Commissioner Lynchard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item number one is discussion of renewal of the Team Florida Marketing Partnership Agreement with Enterprise Florida in the amount of $25,000 from the Economic Development Franchise Fund. Uh, Shannon, do you want to address this? Yes, good morning. This is just a uh, partnership that we have with the state of Florida. It allows us to participate in events that where consultants and companies alike come together and we have the opportunity to sell our area. And uh, communities across the state of Florida is doing this and I feel like if we are not involved then we are left out. Any questions? If not, I'll move this to Thursday's agenda without objection. Here, none, it passes. Item two is discussion of reappointment of Daniel Bussey representing the Education Board and Dana Mullins with Penn Air Federal Credit Union to the Workforce Escarosa Inc. Board of Directors. Any questions, comments on this? If not, I'll move this to Thursday without objection. Here, none, it passes. 
Item three is discussion of soliciting proposals for military consultant services. Um, again, this is funded by the Defense Reimbursement Grant. Um, any questions, comments? This is an ongoing program. Shannon? Defense Reinvestment Grant. Correct. So this is funded by the Defense Reinvestment Grant, and the, the, the grant cycle is coming out now. And just to get the, uh, the contract with a military consultant, uh, in line with a defense with a DRG and uh, to renew uh, not to renew but to go out for proposals for a for the military contract sorry okay. thank you any I questions think, comments yeah we would be pointing towards I believe it's a July 1 date okay I'll move this Thursday without objection here none it passes item 4 is discussion of Titan specialty construction Inc withdrawal of bid to purchase a two acre parcel located in the industrial park as accepted at the January 22 2015 board meeting uh, any discussions about this matter if not I'll move it to Thursday without objection here and then it passes and number five is, is going to be fleshed out on Thursday Shannon why don't you tell us a little bit about it correct uh, as I mentioned at a previous board meeting, the, we received, Santa Rosa County received a Florida Sports Foundation grant in the amount of $10,000. And as a requirement of that grant, we issue a certificate of insurance naming the Florida Sports Foundation as an insurer of that uh, insurance policy. Uh, Tough Motor is requiring us to have a community agreement with us between Santa Rosa County and Tough Motor that uh, will allow them to send that insurance policy to the Florida Sports Foundation. So I will have that ready by Thursday's, Thursday's meeting. Thank you, Shannon. I'll move that to Thursday without objection. Here, and then it passes. And Mr. Chairman, that concludes economic development. Thank you, Commissioner Letchard. <clears throat> we'll move into the administrative committee. First item is discussion of proposed resolution designating the Bay Area Resource Council, BARC, as a clearinghouse for the two county Pensacola Bay watershed plan. Mr. Walker. Yes, Mr. Chairman, in your packet is some information from um, uh, Jeff Helms, who serves as our, our, our consultant. I believe there's a little PowerPoint. Uh, and, and again, this, this is relative to the ongoing uh, uh, watershed plan that we've been working on probably a year and a half, and, and it, as it moves through uh, the, the the process. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, I'm Jeff Helms with Atkins. We uh, serve as your restored consultant. And really, we're here just to ask you to re-endorse. We're not asking for anything new. The Bay Area Resource Council, we, we provided a slide for the public and for you to, uh, uh, you know, just kind of remember what the Bay Area Resource Council was established to do, and it's been in existence for 30 years. Yeah, I think some of you all remember when we had fish kills and a variety of different things in the Bay, and at that time there was a lot of effort in the 80s to try to um, address those issues. Well, this was one of the things that was stood up by the state, by, by uh, Governor Graham, and uh, they established what they called the Bay Area Resource Council. It was really to get the governing bodies, the elected officials, the commissioners, city council members, uh, the community, academia, and uh, public and business partners engaged in trying to improve the water quality in our areas. And, and y'all have done that over the years, and I think you've seen that the um, water quality has improved with regulations, especially uh, this body, the county commission, with your 100-year uh, stormwater quality, uh, stormwater attenuation uh, requirements at Roger implements, and those gone a long way through policy to address that. We're here today because, you know, there's a potential for a lot of uh, money to come to this area. Go back. That's just a, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, there's a potential for a lot of money to flow through into and addressing the Pensacola Bay watershed in the future with NIFWIF, with Amendment 1, and with RESTORE. And while we're asking you just to re-endorse, along with this Cambia County, they're, they're providing their resolution also to make the Bay Area Resource Council the vetting process, if you will. So we have our local folks that live here in, engaged in the process. We have our lo local technical staff 
involved in the process when we have our commissioners, the folks that are voted. It's not unlike the Florida Alabama TPO, uh, where you know you have so much money it fil filters down the community, the technical folks, and y'all make a decision and you kind of prioritize the projects. Um, all we're asking is you just kind of reendorse that, and that allows um, uh, home rule, if you will. Currently, um, Commissioner Bob Cole is the chair of the Barrier Resource Council. Y'all have two commissioners on that on that board. City of Gulf Breeze and the City of Milton also have members on that board. So it's 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 a great uh, uh, representation of Santa Rosa County. And I just hate to see a private or a nonprofit run that what we don't have partial control over the process. Very similar to the Alabama Florida TPO. So um, also with me today is Tracy Goodhart. She's with the Water Management District, I mean, not the Water Management, the Bay Area Resource Council. I gave her uh, a, a side thing there, but uh, she's running the Bay Area Resource Council and um, she's doing a good job and we're just trying to reinvigorate it. So any questions, I'll hush and. Any comments about the board? Commissioner J. O. Williamson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I sit on bark with Commissioner Bob Cole, and we had discussed this at the last meeting that, and uh, C City of Pensacola, Scambia County, City of Milton, and, and the City of Gulf Breeze all had representation that said they would go back to their bodies and, and ask for support of this. Uh, basically, uh, looking at the estuary programs down in, in, in the future, what we don't want is have a system where the federal government is telling us. Um, exactly what to do. They're going to do that anyway, but at least with this, we have local bodies and uh, governmental representation where it's kind of from the ground up, where they may be telling us what to do, but we have a lot of people that are on the ground here locally. If you could just hit a little bit on that. I yes. support this. That's why I wanted it to be added to the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's a great comment. Uh, this board has actually endorsed uh, um, recommending funding to master plan, to further master plan and study the Pensacola Bay watershed through the estuary program. And what we're asking is if there's funding that's available that can be uh, forwarded to the area, it can go to the water management district. That's great. And we have no problem with that. And they can vet it through the process, their studies and all through that. But if they're going to stand up another organization, there's no reason to do that. A nonprofit from out of the, out of the area. There's no real reason to do that. We want it to go through the Bay Area Resource Council so it can be vetted properly. I mean, it's, you know, nobody knows our bays and our waterways better than our own folks, our citizens who fish and, and live in around the bays. We know the history. Um, and so I think that our citizens can offer a lot. We've got, we've got technical staff, Roger and different folks and University of West Florida and other folks that can be engaged on the technical advisory committee. And uh, they're well versed on all the old plans that are put together, the swim plans on our bay and the estuary program. So, uh, you know, let's just don't stand up another organization. We've already got one and it's home rule. Let's, let's go with that and we can work with the DEP, Fish and Wildlife and the Water Management District through this organization, so. Thank you, Jeff. Any other discussion? So the action will be to move this to Thursday for a resolution of support without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Number two, discussion of preliminary scope of services and fee schedule for contract with HOK Incorporated for replacement of the courthouse focusing on the downtown Milton location. Mr. Walker. Mr. Chairman, this is the item that came out of the planning workshop and also the, your, your uh, first meeting in February. The, uh, in, in your packet is a, um, uh, an email from, from Duncan Broad with the uh, HOK Incorporated. And really it's kind of a placeholder. It kind of gives a, a laundry list of things that they will need to to, to work work towards they are uh, scheduled as you know to 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 be in town tomorrow and uh, uh, Wednesday uh, portion of uh, tomorrow portion of Wednesday meet with each of the uh, commissioners uh, even catch, catching Commissioner Cole between uh, planes so uh, uh, trying to meet with y'all understand the process and really kind of get focused on how to move forward and. 
in, in this particular regard. And then I, I don't know if we'll have anything ready for the Thursday meeting, but certainly either Thursday or, or, or thereafter, once, once we can flesh out what a scope of work uh, would be, and, and that's why they want to meet with individual commissioners. I think they've probably got some scheduled with the uh, uh, courts people. I'm, I'm not sure about that. I think specifically they wanted to talk to the individual board members before moving moving forward. Any discussion by the board? Anyone from the public? Mr. Chairman. Mr. J. R. Williamson. Just so we didn't have an agenda item added, I figured I'd talk a little bit about this since this is dealing with the courthouse. Um, tomorrow, Don Spencer and I, I think the last meeting I had mentioned about a courthouse in Livingston Parish, uh, Louisiana, that was billed about $20 million um, and 109,000 square foot versus 150,000 squ uh, square foot. So the cost is, is lower, obviously, because of square footage, but the, the cost per square footage was 187 versus 300. So we wanted to kind of see with our own eyes how were they able to do that. So uh, the court courts and I, are, we're going to drive over tomorrow and uh, look at the courthouse, see it with our own eyes, and we might get over there and we might be able to look at it and realize why they did it so cheap. But until we go over, we won't know. So we're going to go tomorrow, and we'll use that with my meeting with uh, – with, um, HOK on, on Wednesday, and then also bring back any information that we found uh, uh, to you on Thursday, and just wanted to mention that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner. So what's the action for Thursday, Mr. Walker? We'll go ahead and leave that for discussion of a potential scope of, of services and fees, and then, and then we'll see if, if, if that's ready to, to make a decision on, on Thursday. So for Thursday, we'll move, continue discussion without objection. Here, none, it passes. And thank you, Commissioner Williamson and Mr. Spencer for traveling to Louisiana. <clears throat> Number three, discussion of change order with R.D. Ward Construction Incorporated in the amount of $27,514.87 for repair of flood damage at the Health Department Annex funded by insurance proceeds. Mr. Walker. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, you see the change order there that's been reviewed by Mike Marshall of uh, Sam Marshall Architects. Uh, and essentially this was the, the, the dental area that had been uh, renovated previously and, and, and some of this information was missed, I believe, in the original uh, specs that we had done for the repair. Uh, so this is, would be to proceed with getting the work done. Any discussion by the board? Move this to Thursday without objection. Here, none, it passes. Number four, discussion of funding options for five-year capital transportation needs. Mr. Walker. Mr. Chairman, in your, in your packets, a fairly long bit of information developed by uh, staff regarding the transportation funding, and that came out of your uh, January 28th uh, planning workshop, and it focuses primarily on the, the uh, replacement of the, the, the Scott program, which, which uh, it goes into, which was a Florida Department of Transportation program we're no longer eligible for, uh, but also points out some of the funding options uh, to, to deal with that. Commissioner Cole was here, was not here, he had sent me an email, I believe it was um, Friday afternoon, I forwarded it to the board and to uh, Mr. Andrews. He's just asked that that, that item be uh, tabled uh, until he's able to participate, uh, which would be the first meeting uh, in, in March. Uh, Commissioner Lynchard notes that, and, and rightfully so, and I'll let him speak to it, that we we, are, we have a, uh, uh, an ordinance in effect through March 31st regarding the suspension of the current impact fees. Uh, uh, and I'll let him speak to the action we may need to take on that to, to, to keep the suspension in, in, in place. Mr. Electric. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, th I think rather than, than try to get something done in a couple of weeks, um, with regard to the impact fees, possibly the gas taxes, I'd like to go ahead and extend on the impact fees, go ahead and, and schedule the 
I guess we'll have to schedule the public hearing uh, two weeks hence uh, to go ahead and extend the suspension of impact fees um, through the next quarter. So that would be through June 30th. And in that time, direct staff to develop uh, a project list, a proposed project list, so that when we are discussing uh, any impact fees or, or reinstatement of the impact fees, we have in front of us a list, list of projects that we can expect to have funded over the next three years or five years. That way we're not just talking about dollars when it comes to impact fees, but the, the related projects that those dollars would generate. Um, and then we will have, I think, the ability to gauge uh, the support for the impact fees. Uh, or lack thereof, but if we if we have a list of projects, then people can see what we will be able to accomplish. And let's also look back at what we've done in the past with the impact fees, the five points realignment, the projects that have been done in the south end of the county. Um, but we can't get all of that done by March. So let's go ahead and I, I would prefer let's go ahead and extend the uh, suspension of the impact fees until June thirtieth. Any discussion by the board? Commissioner Rob Williams. I agree with Commissioner Lynchard. It's a good idea. I know, I, I know that uh, several people came today to talk about this item, so we're going we're gonna to open it up for public forum before we move anything to Thursday. So we, anyone in the public wish to address this? Name, name and address, please. All right, now you can hear me. All right. I'm technology challenged, I'm sorry. Uh, Edwin Henry, uh, 4229 Highway 90, Pace, Florida. I just wanted to speak on the issue of the impact fees and, um, and also about housing, just a little brief comment on how housing is doing in Santa Rosa County, um, the housing market. The housing recovery here is doing uh, better. It's come, it's come along in the last two years fair good amount but a lot of it in my opinion is um, artificially driven by the Federal Reserve and the bond buying program we have interest rates right now at three and a quarter to three and a half percent if um, you have a one percent increase in interest rates one is not a one percent increase in their monthly payment one percent to four and a half percent would mean about a thirty percent thirty three percent increase in the month in a monthly payment you take a mortgage payment that's a thousand dollars a month and if you increase it by 30 percent that's thirteen hundred dollars a month or thirty six hundred dollars a year i really think we need to um take a comprehensive look at any cost to housing and maybe even go backwards and see what we can do to help reduce some cost in housing through our collection of ordinances we have because we have a lot of ordinances that are in place that I think there's some opportunity where we can reduce cost of housing without affecting the quality of life or the goal that the county has in, in having those ordinances in place. Um, there is, uh, when before the Federal Reserve started all this bond buying program, interest rates were at about six to seven percent and I think it's reasonable to expect things going to settle back out when the when the Federal Reserve's, they've already stopped the bond buying, but when all this stuff unwinds through the economy and we get back to a normalized interest rate, it's reasonable to expect it's going to be about a 6 or 7 percent rate. Well, that's going to double the price of your housing right there, your monthly payments on mortgages. And I really think, and, and there's nothing you guys can do about that. All I'm saying is the things you can do something about take that those impacts into consideration because that's going to be a cost to your citizens here in Santa Rosa County and I think it's another drag we're going to have on the economy coming based off of um, 
it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. We're in an artificial situation right now with mortgage rates. The Federal Reserve has never done anything like this, buying you know, billions and billions and billions of dollars in bonds and driving down interest rates. And they can't tell us what the impact is going to be. But they, they would say there is going to be an impact. Um, based off of my 32 years, I don't think it's going to be a positive one, but I think we can get through it if we mitigate it as much as possible. I mean, my cost just since 2007 to build a house has gone up about $11 a square foot. And um, that's just through things you guys didn't, some of it you've had, uh, some things you guys, direct reflection of what the county's done. Some of it is through some things the state has required. And um, of course, my goal is to point this out as much as we can because I'm a provider of housing and I want customers to be able to buy as much house as they can. Um, but we look at, I think we need to take a comprehensive look at all of our ordinances and not just have like a, a knee jerk reaction to try to solve a $1 million, here's about a million, million and a half dollar shortfall in the grant program that's no longer available. I think we ought to really sit back and take a comprehensive look, bring the industry into it, and let's look at the, our, our collection of ordinances we have and where is their opportunity to maintain the goals that the county wants to maintain through those ordinances, but decrease cost. We in business have to do it all the time. And um, I think it'd be a good exercise for the county to bring in some business people who's got experience doing this and working with them and uh, point out some areas where those opportunities are and then you guys decide which opportunities you wanna take advantage of. Thank you. Edwin, just for the record, back in 2009, we did ask the late Commissioner Jim Williamson to work with public services and look at all those rules and regulations that may not necessarily be necessary. And we did do some things back then as well. So we we'll appreciate it. Yeah, I, and at that time, I don't think there was a big um, effort or, or an involvement of the industry. I think you ought to have a very comprehensive approach and have people that are in the business making that make their living in this business to have a stake in the game. And um, it's our job to provide the citizens of this county with housing. And um, you guys set the policy that sets the cost for that housing in some ways. And I think it's our job to let you know um, where you have an opportunity. And I think if you bring those guys together, home builders, engineers, surveyors, people in the landscaping business, people in the, um, and you know, engineering business as far as um, engineering of the homes and things of that nature. Bring them all together and let's take a look. What are some things we can do from a comprehensive nature to reduce the cost in housing that we can do, Center Rosa County, and, um, with, and still accomplish the goals? Because I see some opportunities there and um, I'd like to, you know, participate in that process. Thank you, Edwin. Anyone else? And what we're talking about today, we're not talking about re-implementing impact fees. We're just talking about extending that ordinance until June, until we can put together a better plan on, on looking at all the needs of the county. So I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea today. Anyone else? Here again, <clears throat> we're going to have to do something about transportation with the loss of the, that scope grant. We cannot continue to maintain our roads without some type of additional revenue and that's why we're having this conversation today and I don't have a problem with extending this to June give staff a chance to put together a comprehensive plan of those needs uh, I just don't want to wait too long and then the year will be over and we'll be looking at unmet transportation needs going into the following year so we will move to Thursday's agenda a uh, recommendation to extend the impact fee ordinance until June 30th. It would just be what to I, schedule a public hearing public, on the suspension, on the sus uh, extension of the suspension of the impact fees through uh, June 30th. Okay. Brandy, did you get that? <laughs> we move that without objection here and none it passes. Number five, discussion of appointment of Scott Kemp as District 2 member of the Zoning Board. Mr. Walker. Mr. Chairman, this was the item that Commissioner Cole, I believe, had mentioned at the uh, uh, meeting in uh, Tiger Point. 
uh, and he's that that will be on the agenda for Thursday. Move that recommendation to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, Wallace. <laughs> Name and address, please. Wallace Mahout, 5500 Cox Road, Milton, Florida. Um, uh, I'm glad that you're going to approve Mr. Kemp uh, for this position. I've gotten to know him over the last two years, and he seems like a very reasonable, responsible person, so thank you very much. Thank you. We will move that recommendation to Thursday's agenda without objection. Here and none, it passes. Number six, discussion of Pink Pirates of Navarre, 5K fundraiser on Navarre Beach, Saturday, October the 30th, 2015, beginning at 8 a.m. Mr. Walker. Mr. Chairman, is, is you see the item on the agenda. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. They've worked with uh, engineering, uh, with Navarre Beach staff on, on that route and, and the time, and we'll, we'll do the, make sure about the uh, sheriff's office. And I believe it's the third it's what's included in their backup. It'd be October the 3rd. So, Mr. Rob it. Williamson, you're going to be running in that race? He, he, he's going to be the pace yes. car. Thank you. I will move this to Thursday without objection here. None it passes. Number seven, discussion of appointment of second commissioner as voting member of the West Florida Regional Planning Council based on county population increase. Mr. Walker. Mr. Chairman, in your letter is a copy of, uh, in your packet is a copy of the letter that the Planning Council had sent uh, uh, earlier in the month regarding the second member, I guess, based on the uh, uh, 2010 census data, uh, uh, which, which would uh, enable another seat on the Planning Council. Currently, she's wrong, is, is, is Jerry Williamson is no longer uh, uh, serving on the Planning Council Bob Cole is the current uh, uh, regional meeting, uh, re regional member, uh, and so they just need a second. And Mr. W Mr. Williamson had a conflict with the meeting time. Last time it came up. Commissioner Lynchard? I'll nominate Commissioner Rob Williamson. He'd be a good one. Sound like a great choice. We will move that nomination to Thursday without objection here, and then it passes. Make sure they understand which one it is, because the last time we tried to appoint Commissioner J. O. Williamson to something, it got confused, and they thought it was Commissioner Rob Williamson. It took two weeks to get the two Commissioner Williamson straightened out. So, All right, we move that to Thursday without objection here, and then it passes. Number eight, info only. Uh, public hearing item scheduled for 9.30 a.m. Thursday, February 26, 2015, none. Number nine is the add-on Three Mile Bridge. Discussion, Commissioner Lynchard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If you'll recall at our last transportation planning organization meeting, a subcommittee was set up to work on maintain, uh, a, a study maintaining the uh, MOT for during the construction period of the Three Mile Bridge. Um, the subcommittee met last week. Um, myself, uh, representatives from City of Gulf Breeze, City of Pensacola, and Escambia County. The proposal was made that each entity would contribute up to $5,000 towards the development of the MOT study. The City of Gulf Breeze has already committed theirs. Um, City of Pensacola and Scambia County are going to do so in this meeting cycle. I told them I would bring it back to our board as well. It is a, you know, the, the construction of the new bridge will be a massive undertaking, approximately four and a half to five years in the works um, from the date of kickoff, which is going to be uh, slated to be early in 2017. So uh, for four and a half years, there's, there's a, the potential for a major impact to traffic flow in the south end of the county. And I think this would be a small price to pay to make sure that we have another set of eyes on the, on the plan prior to FDOT putting their um, design build criteria together, just making sure that the local flavor is included when it comes to traffic uh, movement. As uh, uh, Commissioner Robinson said at the meeting last week, we want to make sure that 
you know, whichever construction firm is, is working on it knows that there's a Blue Angels weekend every summer, and they need to take that into account when they're doing their construction. So bringing, I, bringing the, the local concerns, you know, that we have to the table. So I would move that to Thursday without objection. Unless there are any questions, comments? Any discussion by the board? Hearing none, it's approved without objection. Hearing none, it passes. I'm just glad I live north of Highway 90. <laughs> I can't imagine what that's going to be like down there. Good luck, Jeff. All right, that concludes the administrative committee. We'll now move into the engineer's report. Mr. Blaylock. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Item number one is a discussion of a local agency program agreement with FDOT for the Tiger Point sidewalk construction project. Enclosed in the backup is the, uh, the LAP agreement, and it totals $65,000. And with the uh, reduction for the CEI, which is the Construction Engineering Inspection, leaves 58000 500 for construction. Our preliminary engineering estimate I bring to the board's attention is about 91,000, so that's going to leave a shortfall. Of course, we won't know exactly what that shortfall may or may not be until we actually bid the project. This uh, agreement will allow Santa Rosa County to receive the $65,000. Any discussion by the board? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Rob Williams. Just want to say it uh, definitely seems like a worthwhile project and definitely something that's needed there. And uh, just one question, the uh, balance of the funding, do we know what source that would be coming from? That would be a decision uh, of the board and would certainly defer to the District 5 Commissioner because he's been very active in, in this project and getting it on the list. Absolutely. Commissioner Lynchard. Mr. Chairman, I guess we won't know the amount until uh, it goes out for bid, but for example, the uh, sidewalk on East Bay Boulevard, 399, that was funded through the impact fee reserves for, it, for Area 3, so that would be a source of funding that we could use for the uh, construction of this sidewalk. That's what I was going to recommend, so. We'll move this to Thursday without objection. Here and then it passes. Mr. Blaylock. Item number two is a discussion of the preliminary plat for Stone Chase, Phase 2. This is a 127-lot uh, subdivision, and it's in uh, Working District 3. And um, we would move that for action. Is that District 3 or District 1? I'm going to defer to Avis. Which side of Quintet is 1? Is Quintet all south? Or I stand corrected. I believe it's 1. You yeah. It's on one. the west side of Quintet. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Right. Chairman. Commissioner J. O. Williams. We had, um, I think we had done a rezoning back in over the summer. Um, on this phase, and I had uh, abstained from voting on that because I do a lot of work, and, and, and the people that were getting the rezoning was a company that, that I do work for. I'm not going to abstain from this, but I did want to disclose that. I mean, I, 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 don't, I talked to Roy this morning. Roy, I don't see any reason why I can't um, vote on the plat. Um, the rezoning was an issue where, say, instead of 100 houses, they might be building 140, which would maybe give me advantage of having more work with my electrical business. Um, but I just wanted to disclose that in case anybody remembered about uh, me uh, abstaining from the vote on the rezoning. I don't see any conflict or reason for abstention. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner. Here again with a change to make it District 1. I'll move this to Thursday without objection. Here, none it passes. Number three. Mr. And number Blaylock. three is the construction plans for uh, the aforementioned Stone Chase Phase 2. Let it show District Good 1 morning. as well. I move this to Thursday without objection. Here and it passes. <clears throat> that concludes the engineer's report. This time we'll go to the Public Services Committee, Commissioner J.O. Williamson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have one item today for public services, a discussion of the applications and resolutions for the annual submission of transportation alternatives program grants and authorization for the chairman to sign all related documents. All projects are resubmittals from the prior year. Mr. Gomillion, do you have anything you'd want to add to that? I'd like to move to Thursday without objection. Here, none, it passes. That concludes the Public Services Committee report for today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner J.O. Williamson, Public Works Committee, Commissioner Cole. Uh, there are no items. 
So we will move to the Budget and Financial Management Committee. Commissioner Rob Williams. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have nine items today. Item number one, discussion of bids received for corrugated aluminum culverts. Gulf Atlantic Culvert Company Incorporated is the sole bidder meeting specifications. Any comments from staff? Okay. Um, move that to Thursday's agenda without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item number two, discussion of budget amendment 2015-104 in the amount of 171,000 to recognize approved <coughs> FMAP SRL grant to elevate the proper property located at 3135 Harrison Street in the grant fund. There is no match requirement. Recommend moving this item to Thursday's agenda without objection. Here, none, it passes. Item number three, discussion of budget amendment 2015-105 in the amount of 38,000 to transfer funds from the capital fund to the general fund and district two projects fund for ADA compliant ground cover, 24,000 and a county built storage facility, 14,000 at East Milton Park. Recommend approve, uh, move to Thursday's agenda without objection. Here, none, it passes. Item number four, discussion of budget amendment 2015-106 in the amount of 60,000 to recognize revenue from lifeguard for dispatch services from January 1, 2015 to, uh, to September 30th, 2015 and allocate for expenditure. Recommend we move that to Thursday's agenda without objection. Here, none, it passes. Item number five, discussion of budget amendment 2015 Dash 107 in the amount of 46,000 to carry forward funds for the design stage of the Ponderosa MSBU until assessments are collected and reimbursed to the general fund. Recommend move to Thursday's agenda without objection. Here, none, it passes. Item number six, discussion of budget amendment 2015-108 in the amount of 25,000 to carry forward funds for contract modification number three to task order 25 with CH2M Hill for professional services for Navarre Beach Utilities as approved at February 12th, 2015 Board of County Commissioners regular meeting. Recommend we move to Thursday's agenda without objection. Here, none, it passes. Discussion of budget amendment 2015-109 in the amount of $85,850 to carry forward funds for a task order with HDR Engineering to provide technical support in the development of landfill gas to CNG processing, storage, and fast fill dispenser facility as approved at the February 12th, 2015 Board of County Commissioners regular meeting. Recommend move to Thursday's agenda without objection. Here, none, it passes. Uh, item number eight is the uh, discussion of county registers, or excuse me, county expenditures check register. I'm still reviewing and uh, will provide for your signature before Thursday, Mr. Chairman. And I recommend that we move that to Thursday's agenda without objection. Here, none, it passes. Item number nine is your add on, Chairman Salter. <clears throat> Here again, several months ago, uh, working with Tammy Simmons in our parks department, we purchased a concession trailer to go up at the Fidelis uh, ballpark. Uh, we're in the process of installing that. We need to do some upgrades on uh, a septic system up there. So the budget amendment would be in the amount of $5,400 from District 3 Recreation Funds for the septic system at, at the Fidelis Park. Would you like to make that in the form of a motion? Uh, I would move approval without objection. Thursday. Uh, to Thursday's agenda without objection. Here, none, it passes. That concludes the Budget and Financial Management Committee report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Rob Williamson. We will now have public forum. Anyone from the public wish to address the board? Hearing none, we are adjourned.